The Saskatoon berry is a treasured wild fruit and a prairie tradition. It was often one of the only foods available for early prairie settlers, also an important food source for victims of drought and depression in the 1930s. The Saskatoon is resistant to low temperatures and grows in a wide range of soil types. To find out more about this fruit, we head south of Calgary to, where else? The Saskatoon Farm. Hi, I'm Paul Hamer and I raise Saskatoons. And I'm Karen Hamer and we're here at the Saskatoon Farm and I'm the brains of the operation. Karen and I met in Olds College about 1976. We went to the same high school and lived a block apart but didn't know each other then. So in college we ran into each other, recognized each other. After college, we both pursued careers in landscaping and interior landscaping and then we moved to Pritis and then we found this farm and Paul always wanted to plant Saskatoons. And been together now for 36 years. Growing a commodity that everybody else is growing doesn't appeal to me at all. Um, I like the idea of growing something that other people don't have um, so I can set the value and set the price and set the standard for what's what's being marketed. The junction of the two rivers and the historical perspective that that brings to the property and obviously the water and this, it's just a great place to live, as simple as that. We decided to move to this farm because it was um, a better opportunity for one of us to stay home because we were both working. And uh, then it graduated to both of us being able to stay home and work 24 seven. We always knew we wanted to raise our children in the country. Paul and I have Sean, who's also taking horticulture, and Austin uh, works here on the farm as well, and he teaches yoga, and he's really into health supplements and uh, the good quality food. And we have a big garden, and he helps with the garden produce, and, um, and Johanna rides horses. She's 16. I have no real farming background at all. I always say that I have no preconceived notions on how it should be done. So I just really wanted to do this and it just happened. It just developed on its own over a period of time and with a lot of hard work and a lot of effort, we got to where we are today. The hillsides in this area on both sides of this valley are covered in Saskatoon, native Saskatoon. So it's certainly conducive to growing Saskatoon. In 1987, I planted my first field, which is below us here. It's about a 20 acre plot. And since then, we've put another 20 acres on the top field. Um, just this year, I put in eight additional acres. We grow three different varieties of Saskatoons. Um, one is distinctly my favorite, it's the North Line. Um, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't even bother planting the other two. I'd just plant that one, but we don't know. Uh, back then, we planted three varieties. One, I've largely eliminated the Thiessen variety I don't grow anymore. Smoky is not too bad. I have about a quarter of my orchard now of that variety but predominantly Northline. The Saskatoon Farm's U-Pick Orchard is open mid-July until the middle of August. In the U-Pick on the weekend, we tell people to try to come during the week because the weekends can be kind of busy. I probably 2,500 to 5,000 people on a weekend. It's busy. Some people just like to come up with their family and pick up a pail. We find more and more people pick up a pail and then say they picked and then they go eat. They go to the restaurant, which is okay. And we have a 4,000 square foot garden shop, gift shop, and we have a lot of garden wear for the gardeners and um, a lot of art. We like a, we have a lot of really nice um, Canadian art that we try to feature uh, and um, little objects of interest. We try to be different. And then we also um, uh, have a, a cafe that features our own produce and our own foods and um, it seats about 100 people and uh, we, Paul makes his own ice cream, and we have a bakery that does a lot of baked goods, a lot of pies, a lot of tarts, a lot of scones. A few years ago, I was saying that the U-Pick is dying. It was all the old people who were coming out picking, and, and, and I thought, well, when they're gone, the young people aren't gonna wanna pick, but nothing could be further from the truth. We get more and more young families coming out, and so it's, it's great to see it all grow and prosper. I think a lot of people just like the experience of picking and getting their own food, and it's local, and the whole local food thing, and the whole, 100 mile diet thing and it all works in our favor and that wasn't the case 20 years ago. Our growth has largely been due to word of mouth. We just 
try to provide people with a positive, happy experience and they come back again. I call it the restaurant principle. You know, you have a good meal, you take a friend there tomorrow. And if you don't, you'll, I'll never grace your doors again. And as simple as that. I like them fresh best. And I just, I just love them, I never get tired of them. I still love Saskatoon berries. I mean, I just can't get enough of them. I eat a pail a day during the UPIC days and I, I eat them all year round. They're very healthy. They're full of resveratrol, which is, which is popular now in the health food industry for anti-aging. It's full of antioxidants and all kinds of essential oils. It's a very healthy, healthy berry. And of course, it tastes great. It's got that unique sort of almond flavor and they have like a cult-like following in here in Southern Alberta because everyone loves Saskatoons. I think the best way to eat Saskatoons is when you're canoeing and you find a patch growing on the hillside and, and, you, and you stop and have your fill. That's the best way. Um, I like them fresh, and, but that's only a very narrow window, two or three weeks a year, right? And then after that, we, you know, I, I'd have to say that pie is sort of the traditional way of eating them. We eat them all kinds of ways. We make Saskatoon martinis, but the, the most traditional way of, of eating them would be um, in the form of a, a pie. It's been a good progression and the staff is wonderful and they've really helped us. Everybody thinks that we did it all ourselves and that we work all the time, which we do, but the staff is, our staff is amazing. And everybody says that. They love our staff and they come to see the same old rude waitresses. And they have lots of fun with the staff and they know everybody. It's great. Having the children work here with us is it's a wonderful part of things and uh, it can be challenging at times, and, uh, but we really enjoy having them here. And I think they enjoy being here. It's kind of been a slow evolution because it's been 20, 25 years. But um, it's been fun. We're always dreaming about the next step. Paul wants to build some new venue, wedding venues and he wants to build more flower boxes and plant more plants. And he'll always, I'll, I always tell people I'll be working with a walker and telling ladies, you know, I think I'll be working forever. <laughs> but that's okay. Sometimes I ask myself where the passion comes from because I still love it and I still love Saskatoons and I still love doing it. Some days it's harder than others, but generally speaking, I'm still excited about Saskatoons after all these years and I still enjoy doing it and I still enjoy watching the berries flower and start to turn green stage and then start to turn red and then, you know, you can't wait for it to start and then by three, four weeks in, you can't wait for it to finish. And then the cycle repeats. So we just keep on going. The Saskatoon will continue to be a wild fruit. And wild is something that working in a family business can sure be. Thanks to the Hamer family for opening our eyes to the world of the Saskatoon berry.